To reconstruct a tridactyl foot, that of a theropod, a carnivore, we used the skeletons of known dinosaurs, as well as some living animals, such as birds, which have very similar feet and which leave very similar prints as well. It's hard to imagine the ancestors of these harmless creatures were ferocious predators. But this farmer is not surprised. He's lived with the footprints all his life. When he was little, his parents told him it was a monster that carried off children who behaved badly. Monster or not, these tracings must be exact if Meyer is to compare them with other footprints found in Europe and North America. At the Tondut site, an extraordinary discovery is celebrated in the traditional way. A sauropod jaw, the oldest one ever found. <laughs> Take is overjoyed. He hoped they'd find a skull or part of one. A jawbone is a real find. In sauropods, the neck bone is not firmly anchored to the skull, so a jaw can easily become detached and the teeth lost or crushed. Well, I think this is really a wonderful discovery. It's, it really is going to make a difference. <laughs> We are in agreement. The evidence is piling up and we are making very good progress with the inquiry. I'm really happy. I'm very happy because it confirms what I've seen with isolated teeth. And the jaw bone completely confirms it. These are animals we don't often see. They are not common among the dinosaurs. And we're really at the beginning. We're writing the history of the first of the great sauropods. It's very exciting. Once this priceless fossil is pried from the rock, it will be sent to a laboratory to be liberated from the ancient Moroccan soil that preserved it 185 million years ago. A few weeks after the discovery of the jaw, Take returns to the Museum of Natural History in Paris. Here, a technician called a preparator is removing the last bits of rock from the fossil. It's a painstaking job requiring skill and patience, but the rewards are worth it. He's already succeeded in uncovering several more teeth than Take expected. Bigger, much bigger. It's even more impressive than in the field. <laughs> Widely spaced teeth are a sure sign of the sauropod's great age. Oh yes, a lot will be written about this. This powerful jaw with its strong teeth was designed to handle the tough vegetation that formed the diet of this ancient herbivore. In the lab next door, paleobotanist Jean Desjacques aims to reconstruct the daily menu of this sauropod. A rock taken from the excavation site contains all the information he needs. The rock is fossilized sediment, a time capsule of the environment during the early Jurassic. Buried in this primeval soil, is organic material from plants and trees. Once the sediment is ground up and sifted, Dejox will bathe it in hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is so corrosive, the mask will protect Dejox from its deadly fumes. 
The isolation chamber is for added safety. Once the acid is poured on the sediment, it goes to work immediately. In 24 hours, it will eat away the minerals without destroying the organic materials. Preparing a fossil can take weeks, even months. As more detail merges, the task becomes even more refined and tedious. A microscope reduces the chance of damaging the bone. Finally, the fossils are coated with glue to strengthen and preserve them. This is the end of the toe, since he must have had three bones, about that size. We've got others like that. And then the claw at the end. So he must have stood like that, and then with the rest of the foot, ending the bulb there. Renaud Alain describes an animal that is young enough to be far removed from its archaic ancestors, yet old enough to be the patriarch of the sauropods. If you replace the, the right bone here, you'll see the contact with the skull here. If you wiggle the bone, is under the teeth. This is a very primitive characteristic, found more in archaic sauropods. The number of teeth is very important. There are about 20, but normally in sauropod dinosaurs, there should be only about 15 to 17 for the most primitive ones. As for the length of the skull, we know what it is. It's a relatively large skull. Actually, we know that as it evolved, the skull of the sauropods got smaller and smaller, and more primitive forms still have very, very large skulls. A bit like what we saw with Atlasaurus. The next day, Jean de Jacques collects the organic matter from the acid bath. From these minute clues, he'll reconstruct an ecosystem. Here, uh, I've isolated the fraction between 10 and 100 microns, the fraction of organic matter. Dejac selects fragments of the most easily recognizable plants for examination. <laughs> 